what numbers are. <clears throat> this isn't an abnormal situation to work through a business when you first open it. It takes maybe three years or something to get it on its footing. Are we going to abandon the beach project? No. It's part of our DNA. It's the jewel of our park system. It's a reason people move here. But let's be realistic. It's not helping us out any right now. It's a burden to carry. And oh, by the way, let's add more cost to it. Because I can tell you, the staffing levels that were designed were pre, well, I'll say post-apocalyptic cut to staff that occurred three to four years ago and pre-opening the beach now. I can tell you I don't have enough lifeguards. We're barely keeping the place, I can tell you, we're not keeping the place clean as we should because there is so much traffic. And now people are going, well, we come there in the morning and our garbage overflowing. <laughs> you know, and, and people are going in there at night. There's lots of stuff happening in a public facility. And again, it's not unusual. But this has been like a, a tsunami on us. And in an organization that really can't come up quickly. Everybody's been yelling at poor Terry Neal. I called up there. I can't get anybody to call me. They don't never answer the phone. There's one woman up there originally that was scheduling the events, setting the events up. She's up there setting the tables up and doing all these things by herself. And occasionally we were able to throw some staff over. And there was 100 calls waiting for calls back. I mean, all this stuff was unanticipated in the business model. And it got dumped on us. So I'm telling you, and I'm saying this for general. Y'all already know this. You, you can't just assume that this was a magically poop and everything's going to be wonderful. You need to be realistic. I think we can open the pool. We've already run some numbers. I understand there's a citizen committee, and God bless them for stepping up. There's some people that have talked to me, and they're going to look at some options. Maybe we can partnership. Maybe, and, and you know, we've been talking about some creative ideas. But understand, from what a city owns when it comes to an amenity, a passive park is probably your cheapest thing. Pick up the garbage, people come and go, boom, done. A facility like an aquatics facility is intensive. And it is an amenity that you will not be able to spend enough, but you don't have the money to staff it, to operate it 24-7, to generate all the revenue to pay for itself. And you charge residents a membership fee, whatever they're going to be willing to pay, and if they pay a gate, I can tell you, previously they were making maybe, what, thirty, forty thousand dollars 40000 return? You know, it's, it's never going to catch up. It's an amenity. We need to recognize it as that and, and come up with a plan that works. So that's what we're doing right now, and that's why I've been kind of biting my tongue. I have suffered a lot of insults about why we're so stupid we can't open the pool. The fact is, it's delusional <coughs> that we don't recognize. We're in a real bind in the city. We need to be realistic so we don't get in the mess again and work through this. So I'm going to be quiet now and sit back behind my bow tie. Okay. <coughs> Commissioner Rosa? Well, and that's really, what I'm, that, that's really what I was getting at is if we can do a workshop where we can actually, you know, I, I know you, don't, you probably don't want to do a workshop, or if you have another alternative to educate <coughs> the people. We, we need to get past this room because I get it all the time from people that are not in this room for whatever reason um, asking what's going on. And, and you explained it perfectly, but how do we get that out to the people? Because that, that's where, you know, I, I'm getting beat up with, you know, why aren't you opening the pool? Why, you know, I understand the, the structural problems that we've inherited and, and the dollars that come with it but the people don't, so I, I don't know how we do that other than a workshop. The same people are going to show up at a workshop that are here tonight. Well, I, I, it's tough. I know, but at least we... If, if, if I might comment on that, I think one of the things that... I mean, I think there is a solution for this a little bit, and, and I think Commissioner Amoroso hits the, the point on the head, that, that folks that are here, hear some of, you know, get a sense that, well, it's a little complicated with the pool. Folks that have regular lives and don't come down here every two weeks to see what we're up to and are busy doing other things, they need some other way of finding out. And I think one piece that would help a lot, a workshop isn't going to reach out to those other people. That's just something that we can all talk to ourselves. I don't think that's helpful. But I would think that a one-page, two-page report with a picture or two, if, if there's something visual that's relevant, 
or uh, some numbers, a, a little simple one-page analysis. Here's the deal on the pool. It was used for this period. It generated this amount of income, or it cost this much to operate. Ballpark, you know, you don't have to have it to the third decimal place, but ballpark numbers. And here's what it would do now. Here's two options, three options. Open it not at all. This saves you this much. Open it once a week, twice a week, whatever it is. Put that up on the website, or put it in something or other, and so that there's something written that people can look at. And I think there's a bigger issue here going on also, is that part of what our annual budget is about is to have a dialogue with our community that says, are we at the right level of providing services, and are we at the right level of, of taxing folks? Do we need to adjust? Well, everybody, if you ask them, do you want more taxes, they are going to say, no, we don't want more taxes. Well, of course. But if you ask them, do you want more services, they all say, oh, yeah, we want more services. That's where things get complicated. How much more services do you want? Do you think we need to adjust the mix a little bit? And I think part of what we need to push for is providing the information for people. This is what it costs to run this. This is what it costs to run something else. Is that important to people? And find some mechanism to get some feedback that, yes, this is important. We're willing to pay know whatever it is five bucks more a year to a month a year whatever to to get this particular service or no it's really only three people in the community that, that want whatever the item is and then we can make a more informed decision and the community can see more what we're doing so I'd like to see us use that website put some simple one two page reports and put them up there we have a website if we want to reviewing the new website yes. okay. vice mayor a couple real quick things as you all know, I years ago questioned very seriously, very adamantly questioned the beach finance plan and the business plan. It was flawed from its inception. So it's no surprise to me that we're having this conversation. Okay, and I think we just had our first budget meeting here a few weeks back, and we were told that we we're not going to get the first year's <coughs> payment, which again comes as no surprise to me. I want to remind everybody that money that we borrowed was utility money. Okay, it was utility money. So when we talk about putting a paper together and putting all the information together, we need to talk about that. We also need to talk about how the pool was not included in the overall 19 acres and the two projects. And there's a reason it wasn't included. There's an absolute reason why that pool was not included in that plan. Because they knew they could not put the pool in the plan because the numbers that would need, were needed to support that pool would have drastically skewed the numbers for the overall beach project. And the beach project would have never been able to fly. So there was a lot of politicking going on, there was a lot of shell game going on, and, and I'm really disturbed and heartbroken that the, the calmer minds did not prevail when we had the conversation about the beach and how to pay for it and what it was going to cost. And, and the only reason I bring it up is because you made a comment, City Manager, I want you to clarify that. You used the term thirty or $40,000 uh, in revenue. That is not profit you were referring to. As far as the pool is concerned, you were talking, I, I believe you were talking about thirty or forty thousand dollars of annual revenue. Yeah, that, that would have been memberships in through the gate, I believe, in that range is what was oh historic. But that's against, you know, and let's just use the numbers we're talking about now. If it costs a minimum of eighty thousand just to mothball it the way we have it now between the electric chemicals and maintenance, um, we add another Forty or fifty thousand to staff it part time to open it maybe three to four days a week. We might bring in thirty or forty thousand dollars against that one hundred and thirty. Right. But my point was the way you said it. It's not profit. It, it was not profit. It's revenue. It's just revenue. Just, revenue. But your expenses are always going to be greater. I just want to because we need to accept that the pool is an amenity. Right. And that's the, that, that's not a bad thing. It's not if you've got the money and you figured out how to do it. It's a great amenity. And, and, and like I agree with Commissioner McBoy, we need to come up with an official position paper, whatever you want to call it. Let's get it out there. Let's let the world to see. You know, I'm hearing rumors that we're going to the latest, greatest rumor, which is completely untrue. There's no a shred of a fact to it. Was that somehow we were going to uh, rip out the pool, put it in a parking garage, and put up an office complex? But that's the kind of misinformation. <laughs> that's the kind of rumor that gets started when we fail to communicate communicate properly with what's going on. I'm just, well, I'm just saying, yeah. those are the types of, of you know, as silly as that may be, that was very important to the person that told you that. 
And in their minds, that was important and that was real. And we have got to put up the official word. I, I'm very heartened by this citizen committee that's coming together. They seem to be a group that's intent on trying to find some solutions, make some recommendations, and they're asking the right questions right now about expenses and staff.